Hey, greetings and uh, shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining the mentoring uh, this uh, morning. Uh, before we begin, uh, let's just pause for a word of prayer. Can I ask uh, uh, Ravini to lead us in prayer, please? Yes, yes. Sure. Thank you. Heavenly and gracious Father, the creator of heaven and earth, we thank you for this beautiful day, Father, that you've given us to glorify you to know you more, Father, to walk with you, Father. In all things, we give you glory, honor, and praise, Father, for the work that you have begun in us, for the promises that we stand upon, for the, for the name of Jesus, for the work that Jesus has done in our lives. We thank you for everything, Father. And in this time, Lord, when we are seeking you more, Father, let all things be done in your fear and reverence, Father. Give us the wisdom, the, the knowledge to, to seek you more, Father, and be able to understand your plan and purpose for our lives father bless all the faculty bless all our teachers who are here to answer the students father let them be filled with your wisdom and favor let the spirit of excellence rest upon each of us father that we may know you and receive your word in its fullness of our father continue to lead us thank you that you've given us this time when we can lord father talk to each other father and whatever we do it may glorify you father bless everyone and continue to lead us, Father. Once again, we thank you and we glorify your holy name in the precious and matchless and most magnificent name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Thank you, Sister Ravini. So uh, during this uh, mentoring hour, we take time to address any questions that you have, questions that are part of your course, uh, what you've been learning, what you've learned, uh, or questions uh, regarding Christian life or ministry, or even your uh, faith journey, uh, you know, or if you need more clarity about your understanding regarding God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you can uh, unmute your mics and ask your questions, or uh, you can just post them on the, you know, chat section, and our faculty are here and we will uh, answer your questions. No questions? Yes, I, I have a question. Yes, please go ahead, Jaya. Uh, there is uh, in 1 John, I was just looking for this verse. There it is written that um, there is a sin that is pertaining to death. And I'm not saying that you should pray for it. So my question is, uh, Jesus has forgiven all sins. But what is the sin that is uh, unforgiven? that we cannot pray. Uh, you said 1 John? Uh, I think it's in chapter 5. I was just looking, that's why I was taking time to ask. I just let you. It's the yeah. 16th verse. 16th verse. 16th verse, sister. 1 John chapter 5 uh, was 16? Yes. yes. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin unto death there is a sin unto death i do not say that he shall pray for it okay uh anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death he will ask and he will give him life for those who Commit sin not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. Okay, can uh, any of our faculty would like to answer this question from 1 John chapter 5, verse 16? Any thoughts? Pastor Nancy, any thoughts on that? Uh, 
Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Pastor Selina, and uh, thank you, Jaya, for this question. So, yes, we see here in 1 John chapter 5, um, uh, you know, there is a reference to a sin um, which, if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death there is a sin leading to death i do not say that he should pray about it so uh, i would uh, like to share my insights on this see uh, i believe that um, I mean, more than that specific sin uh, as in the the act or uh, you know the uh, committing of of uh, something uh, i i believe what this is actually talking about is a state of one's um, heart before god we have uh, in hebrews 6 again you know when we look at hebrews 6 um, from verses 4 to uh, was uh, six you know, we see there that uh, somebody who has uh, tasted the the good things in god so then we are very clear that it's a believer that hebrew 6 is talking about um such a person um uh, is unrepentant they go into a state of becoming hard-hearted unrepentant and unresponsive towards god hebrew 6 talks about and this again it's a rare uh, occasion because you know in general we know that as believers we have God's grace and God has given us this opportunity to confess our sins and you know, come return to him um, with the right heart. But if somebody moves into um, becoming unrepentant, hard hearted and you know, uh, not willing to change despite repeated convictions of the Holy Spirit, then comes a time or a state wherein um, it becomes very difficult for that person's to come back to repentance so hebrews i'll just read those verses hebrews 6 verses 4 through 6 it says for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the holy spirit and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the son of god and put him to open shame so uh jaya what i'm saying is i think this refers to that state of being fallen away where you've gone so far away from god and willfully you are the one you know rejecting um rejecting god so that would be my understanding yeah maybe my my colleagues could add to that thank you pastor nancy uh i think in first timothy uh, paul was writing to timothy he says uh, you know if we are unfaithful god is faithful uh, if, but if we deny him, he will deny us. So as uh, Pastor Nancy has quoted uh, from Hebrews chapter 6, you know, it could be that uh, we have tasted and seen, and even it talks about uh, this in Hebrews chapter 10, I think it says, you know, once we have, uh, uh, you know, we have tasted uh, the goodness of the Lord and uh, we treat as an un unholy thing, the blood of the covenant, it's like we trample it under our feet and no more forgiveness of sins is left, but only a dreadful uh, punishment uh, of the wrath of God. So um, it could be this uh, in relationship with, uh, you know, uh, what we see in other scriptures. Uh, if we deny him, then, you know, he will deny us, uh, which is uh, in First Timothy. Uh, so, um, and also looking at what it says in Hebrews 10, that uh, once we have known God, uh, but we treat uh, as an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant, that there's no more forgiveness of sins that is uh, uh, left. So, you know, it could be that sin that uh, uh, is mentioned here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. Anyone else would like to add? Or uh, Jaya, is that... Uh... I, I just thought I'll just add one, one point. Um, I think this is uh, with reference to what Pastor Nancy also said, is um, I, 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 I mean, so I'm just bringing my understanding here that John probably here is referring to apostasy that after knowing that Jesus is the Messiah, uh, then denying his power, his work, um, his salvation, even after knowing it. So the transgression is deliberate and it's also a willful disobedience to salvation after having tasted of uh, who God is and having, having seen the goodness of God, having been saved, going back, 
is what is apostasy, uh, a deliberate renunciation of, uh, of faith. Um, so I, I, I thought he's probably also um, maybe referring to that, which, you know, it's a deliberate <clears throat> rejection of uh, the Messiah that leads to death. Thank you, Pastor Salim. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. I hope we answered your question, Jaya. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Any more questions? There are no questions, then uh, maybe we would just uh, open up this time for us to just share about uh, uh, the goodness of the Lord that we have experienced um, the, the last two months of this year, Jan, Feb, and we are half into almost the close of uh, March. Uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 34, verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh, you know, we've all tasted the goodness of the Lord so would you like to share, uh, you know, what goodness of the Lord that you have uh, experienced the last um, two and a half uh, months of this year? We just open up this time for each one of us to just share the goodness of the Lord. I'm sure all of us have tasted the goodness of the Lord. So would you like to share? Yes, we're thinking on those lines. We have a question from Herbert. It says, good morning, church members. Uh, my worry is, is there anyone who is rest assured of going to heaven? Uh, we try our level best to be away from sin. But like one writer, I think Apostle Paul said, whenever I want to do good, sin uh, intervenes. Yes, he writes that in uh, Romans. Uh, I think it's Romans chapter 6 or, uh, you know, the, the chapters following that. The word says, even a mere thought of opposite sex or someone's spouse, you have already committed adultery with him or her. And the fact that we are putting on fresh our bodies with uh, within a grimace of an eye, one finds that he or she has already gone astray. An example, a certain archbishop ended up taking up someone's wedded wife. Kindly share your views about that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we have Herbert's uh, question. Uh, like anyone like to answer that? So basically, he's asking is, uh, uh, so your, uh, your Herbert, uh, just want to get some more clarity about your question. Uh, is your question that once we have, uh, uh, you know, accepted Christ, uh, we've tasted of his goodness, we've, uh, ex you know, experienced his the salvation that he's given to us, uh, if we sin, uh, uh, will that be a hindrance from us going to heaven? Is that your uh, question? Is Whether it's any sin, even you've mentioned about adultery. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 that's what I'm saying. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, I was saying that um, I, I think that uh, there is... Um, someone is not sure that he is going to heaven because we are always surrounded by sins and uh, all the time they are tempting us. So I was seeing that is there any way where by you can find somebody is pure, pure, holy, or we are just always surrounded by sins and we are not sure we are going to heaven. Okay, so your question is that uh, we've experienced salvation, but since we live in a fallen, sinful, evil world where there is, uh, it's filled with sin um, uh, and we are, uh, you know, let into temptation and we can fall sometimes, uh, can that be a reason why, you know, we will not go to heaven? Is that uh, uh, 
the understanding of your question, right? Yes, 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 Madam Serena. Okay. Thank you, Herbert. Uh, would, uh, Jean, would you like to answer that question, please? Yeah, um, yes, Selena, I'll, uh, yes, uh, I'll, I'll try my best to do that. So, um, uh, Herbert, the Bible is very clear about uh, salvation being permanent, that the condition necessary for salvation is <clears throat> to believe in Christ and what he has done um, for us on the cross. Um, so it is, um, uh, so when... Oh, no, I think that's that's when we are justified that the minute that we come to a place of salvation, we are made right in God's eyes. We are made right in his presence. However, because we live in a fallen world <clears throat> and our spirit man is that which, uh, which has been renewed, the body and the soul is what continues to the need to be sanctified, to be made like Christ. So that is something that we, we um, do on a regular basis. And like you said, yes, the, the tendency to sin or to sin repeatedly um, should bring us to a place of repentance, sincere repentance, and uh, seeking the power of God, seeking the power of the cross to overcome uh, those sins. And, you know, being sanctified on a regular uh, basis. So we're progressively being sanctified. So up until the time we're called um, to God or till the time he returns, we are progressively being sanctified. Um, so uh, the fact that it, our, our salvation is there uh, and, and the minute that Christ, uh, the minute that we receive Christ, that, that happens. I mean, there is no two ways about that. But our souls, our bodies require to be progressively sanctified. So you come to a place of repentance with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the word of God, um, coming to a place of being what Christ would want us to be, being more like Christ. Yeah, I think I'll leave it, that, leave it there. And, um, Pastor Selena. Thank you, Jean. Uh, would anyone else like to add? I think Jean has uh, shared some good points there. Uh, yes, we are justified before God uh, uh, the moment we um, accept him as our Lord and Savior, the moment we ask him to forgive our, uh, our sins, uh, and God looks as, as, at us just as, we, as if we have never sinned. Uh, we have a right standing with God. We made righteous. Uh, so that is all something that happened instantaneously. Just the moment we uh, accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, uh, but God has also provided a way that uh, you know we could be sanctified. And sanctification, uh, like Jean said, is a progressive thing that happens throughout our lifetime. And uh, God has given us uh, the spiritual weapons that we need, uh, you know, to overcome uh, temptation. Uh, the word of God says, uh, you know, he's given us everything that we need for life and godliness uh, to help us uh, uh, to walk in a godly way. And uh, um, uh, so even Paul writes about this in, uh, in, in the book of Romans, uh, like you have said, you know, uh, says, you know, we don't want to sin, but we end up sinning. And, uh, you know, he says that um, uh, once we accept Christ, we are dead to sin, the law of sin, uh, which means the law of sin means the power of sin, uh, the, the dominion of sin, the reign of sin in our bodies is, uh, is uh, considered broken, nullified. Um, and uh, so if we are born again, then we, uh, you know, we don't have that inclination or the tendency uh, to give into uh, a sin because sin no more, uh, no more, uh, no longer reigns in our mortal bodies. Um, so we need to do everything uh, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And uh, sanctification, uh, unlike uh, justification, and uh, you know, is uh, is something that uh, we have to cooperate with God, co-work with God, the Holy Spirit, uh, in the sanctification process. It's both an active and a passive. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, you know, way that, uh, you know, uh, we receive, uh, our lives are cleansed, our lives are sanctified. Active is that we, uh, passive, sorry, is uh, that, you know, we just ask God, we pray and ask him, uh, to cleanse us, to wash us of our sins, but active uh, uh, participation is when we take the necessary steps, steps to make that choice to choose. Uh, we know what is right, we know what is wrong, um, but we take those uh, necessary steps, uh, uh, you know, to to do what is right, to do what is honoring, to do what is pleasing. Yes, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, helps us in the work of uh, sanctification, uh, but you know, um, uh, God has given us the free will. We need to choose, and so uh, sanctification is also uh, uh, our role, our part, where we have to play an active and a passive role. Uh, and hence, you know, uh, we just can't do things that, uh, uh, you know, that are against God's word, his, uh, his standard of righteousness and holy living. If we have tasted the goodness of God, if we have tasted his salvation, then we will, you know, obviously uh, want to please him in everything and his word will cleanse us and the Holy Spirit, his sanctifying work in us will lead us and help us. So did that uh, answer your question, Herbert? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, but then, since I see that we are continuously uh, sinning, I think every time a person sins, should uh, immediately ask for, for re to, to repent. Because when you baby, you have just done a, a sin. <laughs> Let me say a small sin, and uh, oh, as you are traveling, before you repent, maybe you die in an accident. Then it means you have more chances of going to hell because you would have died. When you have not, uh, when you have not repented, so I realize that every time you make a sin, immediately you you have to ask for forgiveness. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Herbert. You have to ask for forgiveness, and also ask uh, God to give you the strength not to do the same thing uh, again, uh, commit the same thing again. Thank you very much, Jean, for your uh, insights on that and your inputs. So anyone else has any other questions? Uh, Pastor Selina, uh, can I just add something to that? Sure, please, Pastor Nancy, please okay, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Herbert, so uh, I just wanted to add, I mean, we've, we've seen how the Lord Jesus has uh, made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, and yet, you know, in our um, living out this life, we have to, um, as Pastor Selina said, sanctification, like we have to cooperate with God and, um, you know, live uh, live what Christ has done in us. He has broken the power of sin in us. So we have to live dead to sin. Uh, if at all, you know, we do commit uh, a sin, then as uh, 1 John 1, uh, we read there, you know, 7 through 9, that we can confess our sins and we can receive forgiveness for that. But one thing I, I wanted to reiterate, uh, Herbert, is um, uh, the Bible says like uh, Hebrews 10 uh, and verse 14, uh, it says that for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. So uh, we see that the Lord Jesus has offered himself as the price for the sins of mankind. And uh, therefore, you know, the reason why we are now justified, sanctified, and, uh, you know, if you will, uh, we will be allowed to go to heaven or the assurance of going to heaven is because of what the Lord Jesus has done. So uh, we, we, any born again believer can have that assurance that Jesus has paid the price in full for me to have a restored relationship with God here in this life and even uh, in the life to come. So, because in the last, like you had mentioned that suppose we, uh, someone commits a sin and then, you know, they, they don't have the opportunity to repent, uh, then will they go to heaven? So the thing is, um, we have the assurance of uh, going to heaven or being with the Lord Jesus in eternity because of what Jesus has done for us. So we depend on that. That is what uh, also brings the continual cleansing through sanctification in our uh, Christian walk. Um, I, I hope I have communicated that uh, with clarity. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to add that point here. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. I hope that inputs uh, helped you, Herbert. 
helped in answering your question. Okay, uh, just Jaya, coming back to your question, uh, I quoted from uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 12 and also from uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. So 2 Timothy 2, verse 12 says, If we endure, he will, uh, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. And uh, about treating the blood of the covenant as an unholy thing is uh, from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. Okay, uh, anyone has any questions? There are no questions then. No. Uh, like, uh, yes, uh, sure. Uh, sister. sister Rupa has uh, put up a question there on the chat. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, okay, see that. Thank you, Stavani. Uh, so first Peter, Rupa's uh, question is First Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Who by God's power are being guarded by faith for the salvation uh, ready to be revealed in the last time? Excuse me, ma'am. She just, uh, yeah, she just put the scripture reference. I thought just to add to our discussion. Yes, yes, uh, to help her, but Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sister Rupa. Thank you. Yeah. So, Savani, she's uh, put the verse there to, uh, for mm -hmm. her but <laughs> Yeah, just to help her but yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, any questions or uh, would, uh, you know, we'll open this time up if there are no questions, if you would like to uh, share about, uh, you know, if you've tasted the goodness of the Lord the last two and a half uh, months of this year. Like I said, the psalmist says in Psalm 34, verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. We've all tasted the goodness of the Lord, and it's a good time to uh, testify of his goodness and just give him all the glory for what he is doing. And it will just uh, edify and encourage uh, the rest of us. Uh, anyone would like to share about the goodness of the Lord? Yes, uh, uh, please go ahead, Jaya. Actually, I see the goodness of the Lord every day because not every day is right. Uh, every day is uh, like the same. There are some struggles. Sometimes there are some tests that comes in the morning itself. But uh, what I see that God is giving me grace to go through and to overcome. And um, I have overcome those areas which, with which I have been struggling last year. By walking with the Holy Spirit, and yesterday also I was I am an Elon student, so I missed some of the lectures. Though so I was uh, just listening to the lecture of Pastor Ashish Raichur about holiness, that so we need to work with the Holy Spirit, and we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help me. So uh, there was uh, one thing that was troubling me a lot, and I applied that. And to some extent, I have come out. But as he said, that you need to sometimes pray for more, pray for longer time. So I'm still I'm still on the way. I'm not reached yet, but it's okay. Like uh, I'm seeing the goodness of the Lord every moment of my life, every moment in ups in downs, in ups in like every time I can see that uh, there is a grace, there is a presence of the Lord. Yes, nobody is with me. There are some there are times when nobody is standing with me, but I see the Lord standing with me. I can feel his presence. So every moment of my life, and this year, this year it has started that every moment of my life, I can see the goodness of the Lord only. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Jaya, for sharing. Uh, I think we all of us are in the, you know, all journeying together. Uh, uh, we are in different stages in our journey, but none of us have reached our destination as yet as well. Uh, and uh, yes, thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts and um, you know how uh, you you've just been experiencing the goodness of the Lord and um, uh, the way He's been teaching you um, and the way He's been guiding you to uh, uh, you know spend more time with Him uh, and also more time in uh, uh, just being holy uh, and righteous before Him. Okay, thank you for sharing, Jaya. Anyone else would like to share? I want to share, ma'am. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Kiran. Yes, please go ahead. I want to say the starting this year, uh, the uh, the last few years when I came in faith on starting that moment, God used to give a uh, place, mercy, and peace, and He is leading as a faithful. And uh, starting this year, two thousand twenty-two, I mm, becoming <laughs> pastor. But for me, it's very challenges. Sometimes a uh, difficult situation it used to come, and uh, that that not able to bear but god is there and he used to give me the uh, the the strength and the peace and comfort is very powerfully and i just move forward and every moment i just uh, victorious victoria victoria i just uh, came out from that and i i remember that god is faithful still and his mercy and grace is forever yeah. thank you thank you kiran Thank you for uh, sharing that, uh, uh, what God is doing and how he's uh, helping you to be victorious. And uh, his grace has been so sufficient in your life, more than sufficient. And uh, we'll just continue to pray that, uh, you know, this, the rest of this year will be victorious in every area of your life. And uh, that, uh, you know, you will continue to experience uh, the goodness and the faithfulness of the Lord. Uh, Herbert has a question. Why doesn't Easter festival have a fixed time uh, like Christmas Day? With the uh, think Paul Emmanuel is here. Would you like to answer that, Paul? Pastor Paul Emmanuel? Yes, uh, Pastor Selena. Uh, uh, I'm very sorry. I don't think I would have the <laughs> appropriate uh, thoughts on this. So uh, maybe any of the other faculty can. Please add their thoughts. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Uh, any of the faculties uh, have any idea about uh, Herbert's question? Good question, Herbert. Thank you. Anyone has uh, any thoughts on this? I think, sorry, I, I, I don't think I'm going to answer his question directly, but I think uh, just to understand that uh, uh, Easter was derived, or the name Easter was derived from a, from a pagan mm. uh, festival <clears throat> that was in honor of a goddess. Uh, I think, I'm, I'm not sure of the goddess's name, I think it's an Easter or something like that. Uh, and it was, uh, sacrifices were made in honor uh, of uh, of that goddess and she's known to be the goddess of fertility and that's why you have you know different representations of easter eggs and things like that to to commemorate that but i'm sorry i don't know i i, I don't think i can answer as to why um why it is it is celebrated why resurrection sunday uh, which is what it is and that's what we believe in mm -hmm. um, and how that name came about but i know easter per se is uh, uh, derived from that so uh, that's as much as i i know thank you jean uh anyone else would like to students have any thoughts on this or anyone else any thoughts Uh, also, Pastor, uh, what I think, um, since Jesus died on a Friday and mm. then uh, resurrected um, Sunday, then uh, Monday, uh, ascension, the ascension, I think uh, because the calendars, they keep changing, now, uh, if maybe they celebrated this time like 20th and uh, 20th another year, we will not fall on uh, a Friday. Maybe it will be now nineteenth uh, uh, on a Thursday. I think they try maybe to push it such that it has to become exactly a Friday, such that, uh, such that it becomes exactly the day when Jesus uh, got crucified. Maybe 
I'm thinking that that might be maybe the reason. Thank you, Herbert, for helping us answer your question. Uh, we have Pastashis. Uh, he says he has asked Dr. Google, and uh, and according to Dr. Google, it says that Easter falls on the first Sunday after the full moon date, based um, on mathematical calculations that falls on or after March 21st. So if the full moon is on a Sunday, Easter is celebrated on the following Sunday. So... And uh, uh, Pastor Dina also says that Easter falls on a different date every year. This is because it is determined by the Jewish calendar, which is based on lunar cycles. And Easter should fall the Sunday after the Passover full moon. This is also according to Dr. Gogol. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Pastor Ashish. Thank you, Dina. Thank you also, Herbert, for throwing some light on that. Uh, uh, yeah. And thank you also, Jean, for sharing your insights on that. Okay, so any other questions anyone else has? Or would you like to share about the goodness of the Lord that you have tasted, that you've experienced? Ma'am, can I share? Please, Rupa, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. For the opportunity and I thank God for all his goodness in each one of our lives and he has flooded our lives with his goodness last uh, Feb February on 26th we had a Thanksgiving service at home I have invited our fellowship members and uh, most of them work in, in a hospital uh, around 27 kilometers away from our house so one of the doctors uh, bo both of them, they were traveling on a two-wheeler and after traveling just for a few kilometers, eight kilometers, they met with an accident on the highway. But by God's grace, uh, the, they were uh, protected. They fell down, but they were protected. They had bruises and, and uh, sprains, but nothing was broken. I really thank God for that. And one of the doctor she started working for the last uh, only four, uh, four five months ago and she was so enthusiastic to come and share and sing and she had so many plans for that thanksgiving but uh, i thank god for saving her life on that highway and what ha and she lost her bracelet during that commotion and all that on that highway so when they told as in the night, it was around 11 o'clock in the night. I was just, it came out of my mouth saying, her, uh, what all, her hard earnings will not go in vain. God will give it back to her. And within a half an hour time, the doctor's driver, he lives in that particular village. She called her up, she called him up and said, can you please go in the morning and just check if you can find my gold bracelet there? And he immediately went, not in the morning, but immediately in the midnight, he went there, he searched and he found it. Hmm. It's very, uh, even if they find many people, they don't get, uh, give, it, give it back to you. It's a great miracle, not only protecting her life, even small little things. God has taken care. I really thank God on that Thanksgiving. He has spared her life and protected her, that child from harm. I really thank God for that. And uh, there's so many things. One more thing I would like to share. Uh, our eldest son has written his DNB final year exam. He is studying in Bangalore Baptist. He's doing his PG. And by God's grace, he passed his uh, theory and waiting to do his practicals and also his thesis is accepted with uh, many times the thesis they keep on rejecting and they have to do it over again but uh, it's God's grace and his guidance that he, it is accepted I really thank God for all that he is doing in Anand's life thank you ma'am Thank you so much uh, Rupa for sharing yes thank God for the protection that he had given the uh, uh, the couple and also thank God for your uh, for Anand, you know, for being able to get through with this thesis. Uh, 
uh, we just speak the favor and the goodness of the life uh, on their lives uh, and we just continue to pray that uh, you know um, that they would uh, be a blessing uh, even as god has been good and faithful to them thank you rupa thank you so much for sharing uh, anyone else would like to share about the goodness of the lord that you've experienced Oh, so sweet. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Jaya. Uh, Jaya says that this year her daughter has been given the position of a head girl in her school. Yes, glory to God. And we just pray that uh, your daughter would uh, be salt and light there, uh, that she would just establish the, uh, you know, uh, the presence of God there. Uh, and uh, even as she leads, that uh, many would see Christ in her and uh, that she would just, uh, you know, uh, lead with uh, the wisdom and uh, the discernment that comes from God. And we just pray also that God would just bless her with, uh, uh, with the spirit of excellence that was on, uh, on, on Daniel to be excellent in everything. Um, to be, uh, you know, and to excel in all things so that uh, God would be glorified in and through her. And also that she'll be a, a great trendsetter, you know, uh, for other children and showing them who Jesus is in and through her leadership and her life. Yeah, we just pray that over her, Jaya. Thank you for sharing. Um, and thank you so much for the prayer. Thank you. Thank you so much. I received. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. What is your daughter's name, Jaya? We'll keep her in prayer. My daughter's name is Tabian Jelly. Kavyanjali, okay. Yeah. Nice name, Kavyanjali, okay. Okay, anyone else would like to share about the goodness of the Lord? Yeah, I know. Uh, Kiran, sorry, I really missed that because I think uh, the uh, the internet connection broke at that time. I couldn't hear uh, clearly that uh, whether you said pastor. Uh, but yeah, it's so wonderful, Kiran, that uh, you are now Pastor Kiran. Uh, just God bless you with... Uh... Yes, Rupa, you want to say something? No, ma'am, it just, just got... Uh, sorry. Okay, no worries. Yeah. So God bless you, Kiran, and uh, use you mightily. Uh, may you just flow in all the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing of the Lord just come so powerfully on you, even as you preach, teach, uh, even as you counsel, uh, even as you minister to people, you know, may the, the anointing of God just flow powerfully uh, in and through you and um, uh, we just pray that um, his word that is uh, rooted in you, you know, will just bear fruit even as you preach and even as you teach that uh, people would uh, experience the power of God, uh, the very manifest presence and the power of God, even as you preach and teach and uh, minister. So wonderful to hear. Uh, God bless you, Kiran. Yeah, Pastor Kiran, yes. God bless Yay. you, <laughs> Pastor Kiran. Yeah. Anyone else would like to share about the goodness of God? Or if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute your mics and ask. Or you can type it in the chat section. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Um, morning once again. Um, this this week was started not uh, it started not very good. I lost my cousin sister. She died of an accident, and uh, she had just wedded. And uh, 
some rumors were saying that the accident was intended. So, uh, but I think that's what God had decided. So we are in great sorrows for sure this week. Thank you. Sorry to hear about that, Herbert. Yes, it's uh, indeed very painful and very sad uh, to hear that. But uh, we'll just pray for you and uh, the family. Uh, just speak God's, uh, uh, you know, his, uh, his love to just fill your heart, uh, to remove every spirit of uh, grief and brokenness and pain that is there. And even if you're not able to understand, uh, you know, what has really happened, but uh, we just pray that God's uh, uh, shalom uh, will just rest upon you and uh, your family and cover you and your family as uh, well. Rupa says that our helper Raji lost her son due to an electric shock three years ago today. Uh, pray for her comfort and salvation. Okay. We'll pray for Herbert's family and for Rupa's uh, helper, Raji. Okay, uh, you will... We just have uh, three more minutes, so we'll just close uh, this mentoring session. We'll close. Uh, just thank God for His goodness in all of uh, the lives of, you know, of people who shared the goodness of God. Uh, we'll uh, also pray for Herbert's family and uh, for Raji. Uh, can I ask uh, Pastor Paul Emmanuel to please lead us in prayer, please? Sure, Pastor Serena. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we just uh, want to thank you for this wonderful time where we could come together as your children and testify of your goodness, of your grace, and your mercy over our lives. Lord, we just want to lift up this, uh, uh, this morning, we want to lift up Herbert's uh, family, even during this time, Lord, where they're going through this time of bereavement. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will bring comfort, that the peace of God will rule and reign in their hearts. Lord, I pray that, uh, uh, Lord, as your scripture says, that you will turn our mourning into joy, God. I pray that even during this time, Lord, that uh, you will comfort them, you will strengthen them, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray for Herbert's extended families, everyone who are uh, going through this difficult season, oh God. I pray that your grace will be upon them, oh God. We also want to remember uh, Raji, uh, who was uh, uh, and the helper who has lost their son uh, uh, through electric shock over, over, uh, over three years back, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you will bring comfort, that you will, oh God, reveal yourself to that family, of oh God, and uh, uh, once again, that your peace and your joy, uh, your, your, your presence be upon their lives, oh God. Lord, we want to thank you uh, for all that you've done in each of our lives, and even as we continue to learn and study together, Pray, Holy Spirit, that you will empower each one of us to be a good witness uh, to of your name and your presence uh, in, in our lives, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you all for joining the mentoring hour today. Thank you for those of you who shared. Uh, have a blessed day and uh, the Lord bless you all. The Lord keep you all and uh, may his face shine upon all of you and may he continue to be gracious in all of your lives and may you experience the goodness of the Lord. Thank you. God bless. Uh, have a wonderful and blessed day. All of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.